Hey, what's up, people? It's Sweet Deet, and I'm back again with another topic that you need to know about. And yes, we're talking about Live Nation. Let's do it. Hey, everybody. If it's your first time here, my name's Sweet Deet, and I talk about all things music, business, strategy, and even guitar. So thanks for stopping by. If you're a returning subscriber, you already know this, but every time I do an episode, I always talk about an artist that I know or wish I knew, uh, but mostly I love. Today's artist isn't a musician at all, but he happens to be one of my really good friends and also, by chance, my neighbor. Today, we're talking about the photographer Fernando de Cias. He's one of the world's greatest advertising photographers, and he'll never say that, but everyone else around him knows him as such. So therefore, I'm saying it. As always, I'll leave a link in the comment section below just so you can check out his work. Chances are you might have seen his work in some of the advertisements that have used actors such as Matthew McConaughey and Michael Phelps, John Cena, amongst a whole bunch of other people as well. There's really something about the way that Fernando captures individual people, and I think a lot of people find it pretty special, so I hope you do too. And if nothing else, you can just follow it for his awesome kid photos. So today, we're going to talk about Live Nation. Just so there's not a lot of fluff in this episode, if you don't know what Live Nation is, just Google it. You've probably been to a concert that they've put on at some point in your life. Some would say they even have this close to a monopoly on the entire live music performance industry. Their stranglehold on the club and the festival community is unparalleled by any other in the industry today. And recently there was a memo leaked from their office outlining their plan into re-implementing concerts all across the world and the stipulations that they're hoping that the artists will go for. As we know, this global pandemic has totally flatlined the entire music industry, and it's really, really bad for musicians right now. The reason why I'm making this video is simply this. These terms are completely unfair. If we don't unite as a musical community right now, we're likely to lose any sort of a hold on our own individual rights as it pertains to putting on concerts through a mega company such as Live Nation. This memo is a classic example of passing the buck onto musicians who have already had a pretty rough go of it being that physical copies of CDs and music in general is now completely flatlined to near zero. So I'm going to link the memo in my comment section below so you can read it for yourself, but I want to highlight on a few things that are completely insane. Again, it's really important right now that we all know what's going on. This moment in history could be one that defines decades for years to come. Also, this type of behavior will start at the festival and the large club circuit and eventually work its way down all the way to smaller venues and smaller clubs, making it near impossible for an independent artist to get started. Let's dive into it, shall we? Point number one today is artists are going to take, according to Live Nation, a 20% pay cut. Did you just hear what I said? A 20% pay cut? Are you insane? If you think about the structure of bands and what money they make on the road and think about maybe the 1% as say like the Foo Fighters or somebody like that that makes a lot, a lot, a lot of money that draw a lot of people. Um, this is kind of insane. For an artist that's a 1% artist as I'm calling it, them taking a pay cut is one thing, and I'm sure that would even drive their profits down so low that it would become questionable as to whether it's even worth touring or not. But for the medium to small level band that's maybe playing stage three at Bonnaroo or something, are you kidding me? Oftentimes when you go to a major festival, those bands that are playing those small stages aren't really getting paid a ton of money. So asking them to take a 20% pay cut is completely ludicrous. Okay, this next point really had me upset. Minimum marketing requirements. Yes, that's right. It's their festival in which that they're hiring you to show up and perform your art, yet now you have to promote their festival too. I think what started as an overall good gesture and also to let fans know of where they're playing and what they're doing now has become standardized and 
and required practice. So now they're saying in plainer terms, you have to post X amount of times about our festival or our event on your social media page and that's just a part of the contract now. While I'm all for one and one for all here, as far as the ecosystem all working together for the good and the glory of music, and maybe that's a utopian idea that I need to let go of, I think this is a little too much. And for the next topic, merchandise sales. This memo says that artists will retain 70% of all merchandise sales sold. And I realize you gotta pay somebody to stand there and sell your merchandise at a festival while you're there. But it seems like in the beginning what used to be like a 5% or a 10% fee now has somehow escalated to 30%. Like really, is this little extra percentage really gonna help you dig out of the hole that you're in right now? Which by the way, isn't anyone's fault. So why should musicians have to help pull you out of this? I just personally think this is a little excessive and maybe slightly more than a little bit. Okay, that was a lot, I know. Uh, brief intermission, uh, clear the head. Now this next topic will really ruffle some feathers. Insurance. This new clause in states that all artists have to carry their own insurance. I don't know if you've ever looked into having insurance as a band or anything of that nature, but it's kind of expensive. For some mid to small level bands, if this had a trickle down effect into the small club community, bands would not even start. Quite frankly, it's on the promoter to carry insurance, not on the band. You're the one that's assuming all the risk by taking on all of these bands that come in and play your festival. And the reward of you doing that is you're gonna make more money than all of us like combined. So to penalize us one more time, for making us carry our own insurance is completely ridiculous. For bands that can barely make enough money to get from gig to gig, all for the love of their art and the dream, this it would be a total game changer and it would totally ruin people. Cancellation clauses like due to poor sales, how about the fact that if they don't do a very good job promoting your show or they pick a really bad day with conflicting events going on in their city and not a lot of people show up, if a show is canceled because of poor ticket sales, and let's say that reason is because there's another event going on in town and they picked a bad day, or maybe it's a holiday and the promoter struck out on his promotion, they have the right to cancel this event and only pay you 25% of your fee that you're charging to show up and perform. How insane is this? So these are just a few things and not all of the things that are in this article that I've linked below. You've got to read this if you're a musician. It's really scary. I have a feeling that the musician community is going to rally here and they're really going to make people walk back on some of these claims. But as for now, this is absolutely insane and I'm so glad that it leaked because now we have a real fighting chance to sort of get ahead of the curve on this one and really show them how unreasonable this is. And I know I'm normally in a really, really great mood and all these kinds of things, but this is not cool. I hope that you'll take that article or this video and share it with a bunch of your music friends so they can become educated on this particular subject because it is a sensitive one and is one that I know and that you know will impact the future of the music business. Pandemics are extremely tragic and unfortunate and there's nothing that we can do about it right so why are you going to penalize artists the ones that got you to have the ability to sell all these tickets and make all this money why are you going to penalize us because we're going to be the first ones that pull you out of this when this is all over with it's always easier to pass the buck but don't do it here live nation it's a really bad move i just don't think a lot of musicians are gonna go for it as you sit and ponder all of the things in which I have spoken about, go ahead and smash that like button because it really helps the YouTube algorithm. Also, subscribe to the channel. I'm giving away all kinds of good stuff here all the time and I do it because I like this and I'm loving the commentary that many of you are giving me back on the videos and just so you know, all your topics that you're sending me in private message, I plan on getting to. Keep them coming. So until next time, I'll see you later.
Thank you.